And the Nigerian Center for Disease Control has warned that there is likely to be an even more devastating second wave of COVID-19 in Adamawa and other states in the country due to the non-compliance to COVID-19 health guidelines. A technical advisor in the implementation of NCDC's action plan in Adamawa State, Fahad Mohammed, who dropped the hint during the sensitization of officials of the Nigerian police, civil defense, immigration and correctional services, and road safety personnel in Yola, said that the NCDC was driven to ensure more persons are tested so that the spread of this deadly disease can be addressed and tamed. Mohammed explains that the biggest concern was that people are not taking tests because some of them do not believe the pandemic is real and that is why there is a low number of positive cases. And joining us live to discuss this is Dr. Adebayo, consultant, uh, ENT head and neck surgeon. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Now, Lagos still has the highest COVID-19 figure, and many would have thought that with a lot of awareness about the virus and the safety measures put in place by the government, there will be a significant drop. So why hasn't this happened? Mm. It's multifactorial. Um, what I mean multifactorial is that, one, um, Lagos is an urban city. There are lots of people in Lagos. And uh, don't forget, business is in Lagos. So these are some of the uh, issues why there may not likely be this um, drop. Then the incidence of non-compliance, you know, in the society where you don't really see people actively having the symptoms, there's this tendency for the people to believe that uh, the coronavirus um, has receded. And the NCDC is now warning of a second wave in Adamawa, primarily because people are not following safety measures. Do you think there's a likelihood of recurrence in other states as well? Yes, there are possibilities because um, from what um, research has told us, and we found out that um, um, when you um, follow the guidelines, the basic guidelines, you... Um, protect yourself with your face mask, you clean your hands with your sanitizers, this incidence and social distancing, this incidence is um, reduced. However, because, you know, um, this, there's this thing in the society when you don't see things, you tend to believe it's not um, happening. So there's tendency because a lot of us are non-compliant. And some of these reasons are people say, okay, if you say I should um, use face mask, how long will I continue to use it? Then um, there's no enforcement. Also, there's the incidence, of the issue of indiscipline. We tend to let off our guards only to um, put it on when we see, okay, if we have seen such uh, cases of um, corona actively. And the tendency for seeing this actively is really low because one of the commonest presentations now in, in Nigeria is um, anosmia, when there's loss of smell. And most people, loss of smell is not seen. It takes a while before the person can sense he has lost his smell. So it's not, if there are, ob if there are obvious symptoms now, because most people are symptom asymptomatic, sorry, asymptomatic. So even when they have the virus, there's some people don't know. So there's this tendency to believe that what's, what the hell, we will not um, comply. So there's the wave of increase can spread. And don't forget the, the lockdown is over. People can travel from state to state, from towns to town. So whatever there's, is the, the, the surge of spread reoccurrence is a possibility. And with the rainy season comes, you know, cough, cold, and other allergic reactions. So how do people differentiate, especially as the symptoms of COVID-19 are similar? Actually, that would be a, a major challenge right now because um, except there's a high index of suspicion. And initially, you know, at the onset, um, when uh, people were traveling, coming in from um, out of town, from abroad, there was the high index of suspicion that was that such that if you are coming from um, an infected um, a place where there's high um, 
level of um, epidemic, you 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 and you have that history, you'll be suspected. But now there's now community transmission. So at this point, the difference is very very minimal because you can get um, during the cold periods you can get a, a nasal discharge, coughing, sneezing, sore throat, which are things we see in the ENT. It just needs a high level of suspicion. So it's, the, there's a thin line at this uh, point. There's a real thin line, except people go for screening or if the doctor has an index, a high index of suspicion. At this point, there's really a very thin line, except you have some unique symptoms that will just um, give you a sense of raise an alarm. So things like anosmia, loss of smell, sudden loss of smell, sudden loss of taste without um, any um, without any antecedent um, underlying um, history. All right, now schools are fully reopening, resuming, and many parents are concerned about the health of their kids. Uh, what's your advice to them? All right, my advice, um, first of all, the good news, there's a good news, the pediatricians and from their research, they found out that the prognosis in children is good. Prognosis in children is good and um, the, the severity is in the points, all points, a decimal in terms of the percentage. I, my advice to parents, especially children that have underlying disease conditions, children that are sick class, that even on the normal uh, day should have some basic level of protection to reduce incidence of infection, children that are sick, children that are treating things like cancer, child, cancer in children, children that have chronic illnesses, as much as possible, should stay at home. I will advocate that in parents should come out and let the, the owners of the school know the underlying medical conditions of their children so they could know, they could maybe run a special program for such children. And um, most of the time, you know, children are always children. You also have to monitor them. Then for the teachers, not being selfish, you know that, okay, the prognosis is very good in children. The level of infection, the rate of infection in children is low. How about the teachers? I will also suggest that for teachers, there should be some other methods of um, protection for them apart from their wearing of masks and um, using hand sanitizers, those that have chronic illnesses too, among them should come out, let their, um, the school owners know, and they should not be victimized because you have a, a chronic illness and you are sent home that we, don't want, we, sh we should not work with us anymore. Those that have chronic illnesses, maybe they should be rehabilitated to some other forms of, um, of let me say, lectures, Maybe they will be the ones organizing um, online um, classes. Then they should have periodic um, testings for them. And I should be either affordable or almost free. So those are my suggestions. Hmm. And uh, with the ease of the lockdown, many have let down their guard, like wearing a face mask, uh, for example. So please enlighten us on the need to maintain safety practices. Actually, there is need to maintain safety practice because there is there's this um, when you talk to people, I talk to people, they they say, oh, now thank God now that the corona is over. You cannot say the corona is over. We have not even got to the level of uh, it being uh, totally gone. People are saying, oh, recurrence. The definition of recurrence means that a a disease has completely abated and it is now coming up again. The disease has not completely abated. So it is not even, you cannot even say it's a reoccurrence. It has not gone down. Those that have it are the ones that know they have it. I will advocate that as much as possible, if you are in public places, uh, make sure you use your, 
your mask. I know it can be uncomfortable, but you can use your face mask, intermittently leave the public space if you have issues with your breathing. Social distancing should still be maintained. We should not assume that the coronavirus is, is, uh, is completely gone, the COVID is gone, because in hospitals, we still see them. So I would advise people to take these um, um, issues, these um, simple guidelines, seriously, because prevention, they say, is always better than cure. And I also we advocate that the jingles should keep playing in the social media so that we will not let down our guards uh, completely. Thank you so much for your thoughts, Dr. Adebayo. Thank you, Anit. And moving away now from our COVID-19 coverage, within 48 hours, a total of 174,574 persons successfully registered for the 75 billion Naira National MSME Survival Fund and the guaranteed takeoff stimulus schemes under the Nigeria Economic Sustainability Plan. The federal government announced this on Thursday. Registration for the MSME Survival Fund commenced at 11 p.m. on Monday. Minister of State for Industry, Trade and Investment, Miriam Katagum, said the schemes were introduced by the federal government to support individuals and businesses negatively affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. The minister stated that all successful applicants received SMS and email verification with a list of requirements for the second stage of application, which will commence on October 1st, 2020. The states with the highest applications are Kano, 19,895, Kaduna, 13,575, Lagos, 13,640, Katsina, 8,383, and the Federal Capital Territory, 8,085. The United States government, through the U.S. Center for Disease Control, has provided $2.1 million support to Nigeria to conduct a household survey into COVID-19. The essence of the survey is to help Nigeria understand and, un and determine the extent of COVID-19 transmission in the state of Gombe, Enugu, and Natarawa. The survey will increase the current understanding of COVID-19 transmission and burden in these three states and inform COVID-19 response efforts of the federal government and its partners. The US CDC is working with the University of Maryland, Baltimore, one of its implementing partners in Nigeria to provide technical assistance and oversee field implementation of the survey. The survey will be conducted between September and November with preliminary results expected to be released by December 2020. Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.